my vlog from a very, very tired me. I am in Nachlaot. I just got shawarma in a pita. And um, I'm doing as many people do. I take my food to the benches and I sit and I eat. I just needed to get out. I need to get outside of my house. I needed to have some fresh air. I wanted to come on here and talk for a second about how war affects people. I've seen some people in my comments be like, well, now you know how it feels, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. But I'm not here to compare my pain or my discomfort or my PTSD or my trauma with anyone. That's not the point. I'm just here to talk about my own. And I found it really, really, really challenging to do anything worthy of functioning since everything happened. It's weird how the most simple things you have to make an effort for. So like me leaving my house, putting clothes on, going to do grocery shopping at the shuk. That's an effort for me all of a sudden. Trying to make an effort to every single day at least try to sit on the balcony or be outside because it just doesn't, even though I am walking around, it's not like it feels safe. It's like you don't necessarily want to be outside because you feel more secure inside. Um, but I'm realizing that I, I haven't been able to work since it all happened. Um, my dreams are all dreams of like terror and kidnapping some terrorists and locking myself in the house and like it's just very very mixed in that sense and I think it's also my personal problem with the fact that I am consuming too much of the news and of the images on social media I think in times like this it's really important to understand that I'm not the only one going through this it's literally millions of people going through this and as a collective the country is going through traumatic events and so I'm trying to just remind myself that every individual needs to not be hard on themselves and um, try to take each day as it comes the way it comes so my decision today was uh, to get outside get some fresh air be out in the sun see some green and just sit outside sit outside, I got my bite to eat, I'm gonna go grocery shopping, and just take my time and not pressure myself to do everything at once. Like, oh, this day needs to look normal. What does a normal day look like? A normal day looks like me getting up and, you know, getting out and doing my job and then doing this and doing that. Like, this isn't, nor these aren't normal times and this isn't a normal day. And so I can't treat it as if it's the same. Um, so that's how it is. Jerusalem is a bit less tense than the days before. I think people just need to get out and people need to work and people need to feel as normal as they can be in a very abnormal situation. Everyone's just making their efforts. So I'm gonna sit here a bit more in this beautiful park and then we're gonna head to the shuk. <laughs> So the shuk is normal for these times. I'm trying to think of how many times you and I, dear viewer, have walked to the shuk. It really is one of my most favorite places. It's just so colorful and so interesting, and I love my my people that are here. I'm gonna go to um, the the vendor brothers that I know. I'm gonna get some things from them. It's really sweet that there's um, people stopping soldiers every two seconds and saying thank you to them and they really do appreciate the presence of the people that protect them. My brother has been also drafted into reserves so he's not um, so he's not at home right now so we're praying for that but um, it's a really complex time as to how you express yourself also that's a thing that's an actual thing because I have a few Arab uh, friends, you don't want to make them feel like you don't care about their emotions and their people. It's a bit complex right now. Alan! kilo <laughs> Thank 
I think I'm gonna go to this the little mini super basuk, this little overpriced supermarket that um, basically has what I need. <laughs> oh, okay, let me put you down. I will tell you guys everything from the beginning. And then you guys can tell me what you think because I literally never thought that this type of thing would happen. Okay, I'll start from the beginning. Sorry, I'm, I'm sort of distraught and sort of upset. Okay, this is my last actual day here within about an hour and a half my sister's gonna come and get me from here because i need to get out of here i did not sleep well last night like i must have fallen asleep at 4 30 i was so disturbed <sighs> so i have to just like pack a bag with stuff pack butters things and then just get out of here i need to get out of here so that's it. That's that was my last day. That was my last night spending here, and everything just feels sort of odd and weird. And I just I just need to get out. I need to get out of here. So that's what I'm doing. I'm getting out. I'm just in shock. You know what I mean? I'm just in shock with the fact that this happened. I'm in shock with the fact that I have to leave like all of a sudden. Okay. So, gosh, this feels so weird. I have like essential, important things. So like my passport like my identifications, all that kind of stuff, my laptop, all like my hard drive, stuff like that, that are like really important. <sighs> Trying to think that I need to like pack for, for like a few days or a week, but I'm literally like unprepared. I'm like, okay, I need to pack for a week. What do I need to pack? Or at least for a few days, I'll be here again on Sunday. So I need to do that, but gosh, I need to do this. Okay, I'm gonna pack my bag and this thing. So Butter's confused, <laughs> his little nose. You know, every time that I would film in the Chlot, I'd have to sort of be careful the closer I got to home because uh, I didn't want people to know where I live. But now it doesn't matter. But I live basically on one of the main streets um, in Nachlaot. It's a really great street in general. It's really special. There's a lot of young people here. It's a really amazing mix of people. This is my street. <laughs> it's really cool. I've been wanting to share this with you guys for a while, but of course I couldn't because there was no point in doing that, but now I can. So I think at a later point, I will come and show you guys exactly where I live. Okay, Bunny, it's your last time, Copper. How are you feeling? Butter? <laughs> the scowl. As my sister is on her way, I have him in the cage. I'm gonna take him down, take my things, and we are out of here. Okay, we made it. So this is like, this is our new room. It's okay. Yeah. Just like humans have a hard time adjusting to things into places. I mean, for animals, it's it's really rough because they really can't rationalize that you suddenly just uprooted them from one place to the other. They don't understand. He did grow up in this environment since he was a kitty, but only for a few months. And then after that, it was two different apartments. Oh my gosh, he was literally shaking a moment ago. Like his body was just shaking. Oh, bunny, I'm so sorry. Okay, Butter's in the room. I hope he's gonna be okay. We are ready for Shabbat with the family. Don't say hi. Hi, say hi. Aww.
ברוך הוא הברך אותנו ונתן לנו שבת מנוחה. אבא, אנחנו מבקשים במיוחד בשביל... פידיס, או, וואו! ואחרון ממש ממש יפה. זה שקל לעצמי אפילו. כל חודש במשך שלוש שנים. אם לא היה להם, לא הייתי יכולה לשלוח את... I am, I feel, I, I'm like barely awake, I just woke up, but I think it's quiet enough for me to let butter out. Yes, freedom. Freedom for Bunny. How's the name of him? Yes, yeah, smell everything. <laughs> There's more cats. That's what's insane about this environment. Ah, he's trying to make friends. So it's been a long day. And Bunny over here has had a very long day. So I let him out in the morning. You know, there were times where he was like definitely scared and skittish, but he really likes the other cats, and the cats seem to be like more or less okay with him. He's curious and he's afraid, but I think that he's dealing with it pretty well. He seems to be exhausted. So we're just um, trying to take it easy, and I'm trying to teach him that like this is our new room right now. We're trying, aren't we, Bunny? We're trying. So this concludes the first day. My emotions are very mixed. I'm like, how on earth am I here again? This is a transition. I need to keep my focus. It's just a lot of mixed emotions. Um. I didn't really film anything because everything's a bit rushed, I feel. And then I'm gonna try and just put my stuff in bags at least. Just trash bags. Just put all my clothes in trash bags. I'm going to donate basically all my furniture and then just like take sentimentals with me. This is the progress. That doesn't look like progress so much, but I took almost everything out of this. The bathroom still needs to take everything out. Um, the kitchen is basically fully intact. I haven't done anything because I'm donating it all. Um, these are the, almost all of my clothes. Um, Everything here is basically almost empty. So there's only so much I can do today. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my agarachuk, my shoe cart, and I'm going to take bags, and I'm going to try and take stuff home. back it's quite crazy people just came and took the stuff and um, I don't know I don't quite know what to feel it's quite crazy So this is the part where I haven't eaten. My head hurts. I'm trying to drink in between. Everything is like a real big in-between mess. You know, because it's in such a short notice that no one can really come and help. So now that I'm no longer living here, that's the entrance to my street. I live on Nisim Bachal, um, just down Agripas, very close to the Shulk and my head's hurting, like pounding. Uh, I'm super hungry and I just need to, I need to get a bite to eat.
thankfully this area you can just get up and go get yourself something to eat Hey guys, I'm introducing you to the street. So that's a gripas. And uh, this is uh, super cheap. The 24-6, that is definitely not super cheap. Uh, that's actually my little, it's not a supermarket. It's like a, a mini market, you'd call it. They're more expensive than normal ones, but that's also a 24-6 one. Notice it's 24-6 and not 24-7 because they're closed on Sabbath. Have Hummus Shadchina. I don't even know how to translate that. The, the hummus of tahini, um, which I've been, I actually eat in here only once since I've been here. I had to stop to take a phone call, but that over there is what I call the candy house. <laughs> it's like this artist studio place, and yeah, this is my street, and that's the outside of my building. Ta da! vlog from me and my chocolate croissant um, this is a gripas my way back quote unquote home you know what let me let me take you to the quieter way instead of through the buses and all the stuff we're gonna cut through Nachlot uh, maybe you guys can see a bit of my street and daylight uh, it's so nice. I really do love my street. It's a wonderful place. But, um, you know, if God is moving me on and forwards, he's moving me on. So, conversation time. I would often sit here with this view during the night and, um, and pray. And I feel like, I don't know, I'm not sure if my story with Nachlot is over completely. I still feel like there's a story to be told. I don't know, I had really beautiful times of prayer here with God and I've just gone through such a weird journey here and it's so weird to just be leaving but now it feels completely right, like I can't wait to get out of this apartment just because spiritually how it feels and just all the yuckiness of it. That's it guys. One thing I really did love about this place is the floor. <laughs> But alas, it wasn't meant to be. So here is my street during the daytime. It's just so special. I mean, who lives in places like this? In an ancient neighborhood. I loved that tree. That tree always like was super green. You could see it right outside my window. My neighbor's house. I love her. And then this is downstairs, third third uh, floor. Yep. This is my street. That's how it looks down. Okay, and basically I took everything out of the cupboards. So happy. Good job. Good job, me. I have a vlog on YouTube, but I'm just going to show you on YouTube. I don't know what I'm going to do. This is the yard that I see when I stalk people from my house. This is my neighbor. did it. Ta-da. 
It's empty. Um, literally everything is as empty as I got it and cleaner than what I got it. Whew. Say goodbye. Say goodbye to Nakhlaot for me. It's been a good time. It's been a challenging time. It's been a crazy time. Bye Nakhlaot. I think I'm going to end the vlog here for my lovely street. But I just wanted to say I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for being a part of my life through all the changes you guys have been with me through so much and i know that this, this is a very small channel and i keep saying that but you guys really don't know what your support means to me so thank you for being here and um hopefully i'll see you guys very very soon if you're new here then welcome feel free to subscribe and hit the notification bell and share this with whoever you think might like it and if you're not new here then welcome back and i will see you guys in a vlog very soon i love you